Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be diving into the FPV world again. This time I'll try to find the manual exposure setting for the scenario that I have. So it's gonna be manual settings all the way. A few days ago, I released a video where I was using auto exposure on the DJI FPV drone. And I think any drone that has auto exposure and is moving around really fast is pretty much not going to work. Because the brightness of the scene changes constantly, you have sun coming in and out, you have the drone pointing towards a dark area, towards a bright area. This way, if it's auto exposing, it's constantly reacting to this. And you can really see, like here, for example, the real kind of harsh switching from black, from dark to bright, and it just doesn't really work. The noisemakers. <laughs> so basically it all comes down to setting your shutter speed, your ISO and your aperture. Well, the aperture is kind of locked and I think it's f2.8 on the DJI FPV, especially if it's the same as the Osmo Action, which I also think it's f2.8. So it only leaves you the ISO, and the shutter speed. Now you don't want to mess with the ISO too much because raising it on such a teeny tiny sensor is going to result in very noisy and kind of washed out images. So basically keep it as low as you can, which leaves only the shutter speed. Now if you're on a bright day like I am, well, it's kind of bright, I can easily set it up to, I don't know, 1000 or 2000 of a second and it's going to give me the proper exposure. I will probably have to overexpose just a little bit because I want the ground to be kind of bright and I don't really care that much about the sky because I'm always pointing the drone to the ground. And if you're flying over trees, you have to to see where you're going because if you end up in a dark place then if you don't see anything since the drone only has the one camera well then you're gonna crash because you're kind of flying blind so you really have to be in the sky and pointing the drone towards kind of a dark area and exposing for that at least that's what I'm going to do and also I have to be very mindful of the white balance I don't want my colors to change a lot I think 5600 5500 or maybe even more Kelvin or constant is gonna give me just the right amount of exposure and colors oh my god i think i actually picked the worst time to do this video because i have well there's a lot of kids here we're gonna try and not fly over their heads but a demonstration with auto exposure first and you will see what i mean i'm even going to use auto white balance this time hey let's go, go. okay so you can see here if i look down the ground is bright but then if i look up the ground gets darker the problem with this is that if i fly like so and then switch around you can see how the exposure changes it just looks really kind of amateurish so but the cool thing about this is if i turn down into the trees now the exposure gets adjusted and i will well, most likely never hit a tree because it's not really dark so now the trick is to find the exposure value which is going to be nice for the dark areas but not overblow the sky as you can see right over here so let's let's adjust that now i'm gonna find my exposure Okay, so now I am currently one stop overexposed, but it's locked at 1600 um, shutter speed, ISO is set to 100. Oh my god, these kids are really loud. <laughs> ISO is set to 100 and white balance is set to 5700 Kelvin, which I think is kind of a cool thing. But now, you see, if I turn around, now the image kind of stays the same. It's a little bit overexposed in some areas and well a little bit underexposed in some other areas but the key is to have the ground exposed correctly so because you know mostly people are looking at the ground and not the sky so again i apologize for the kids yelling <laughs> they are with a mountain bike club so i'm gonna try and head back and try to film them so there they are there's the kids <laughs> That's so nice. I just hope I don't crash it. This would be really embarrassing. Anyway, so this would be kind of a cool thing. You now, just bright enough to see the trees. And if I go into a darker area, of course it's going to be darker because it's not, I mean, the drone is not exposing for this, but there's still some detail in the shadows right over here. So I can safely fly. This is kind of a cool thing. And the colors are going to stay the same, which means I won't have trouble color grading. Okay, so let's land this thing. And that's how you land the drone, manually, <laughs> anyway. Now even though you might be used to exposing your exposure correctly with the proper camera like I'm doing right now with a full frame Alpha 7 III with tons and tons of dynamic range and even here I'm struggling between the highlights and the shadows. Now imagine exposing a drone like a teeny tiny small sensor camera like on the DJI FPV. You're always going to have to sacrifice either the dark areas or the bright areas. Now since the drone is typically filming the ground, the ground is the one that has to be properly exposed and that means sacrificing some of the you know harsh highlights of a sunset 
mindset like I have right now. Oh yeah, spaceman. <laughs> so that's kind of the basic idea behind the exposure and, and drone control, especially with the camera. I mean, you can really mess up a shot if you're not manually exposing. And I've done this so many times with typical, you know, classical video drones. It's not that difficult because you always have kind of a slow moving panning shot or something like this. And the camera has time to adjust the exposure and your eyes as a viewer have time to kind of adjust for that as well. However, manual exposing even a video drone is the right way to go. And of course you can use ND filters. I don't use ND filters because I add motion blur imposed, but I could have, you know, shot this at 1 50th of a second and put on, I don't know, ND 16 or something like that. So that's it, you know, that's, those are my kind of thoughts on this very shortly. So thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing if you found this interesting. Hit the like button, which helps, you know, the YouTube to promote the video a little bit more. And if you have any comments or questions about these things, you know where to put them down in the comment section. Bye-bye.